Hello and welcome to the first video in a mini-series introducing adaptive music in F1 Studio. This video series is designed to get you up and running with logic operations and non-linear music systems in FMOD Studio. My name is Sally and I'm the sound designer at Viralight Technologies. Today we're going to have a look at some basic skills that will help introduce FMOD Studio to newcomers and also help FMOD pros apply their knowledge of FMOD Studio to non-linear music. Today we're going to cover some super basic functionality while we set up a non-linear music system. Each of these four videos will add a new level of complexity to the piece and introduce new topics and knowledge. We'll cover creating tracks, the audio bin, mix review, tempo markers, and trigger probability for regions today. The second video in this series will introduce the role of parameters in adaptive music systems, and we will use a health parameter to allow us to control track volumes and effect states according to player health. The third video will add a second parameter, progression, and we will use this parameter to create some conditional logic to allow the playhead to move around the different segments in the piece, so both backwards and forwards in time. Finally, in the fourth video, we will add complexity to the structure of our piece by adding a new segment and creating new transitions and submixes to complement our upgraded structure. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to listen through the music and I will point out to you some awesome features that we will discuss how to construct in studio throughout the video series. Now, the music in action is pretty chilled out most of the time. So we wanna make sure that we can hold this chilled out theme in its own segment. However, you may enter a heightened state of intensity by entering into a dangerous area or just proceeding through the level. And while the intensity changes based on the danger of the player and his progress through the level, we also want to cue changes in the music based on the health of the player as well. So first, things like subtle changes to the behaviour in the music. And then, as larger health losses occur, there will be mix changes. You can hear the choir fading in. Then, when health becomes critically low, this will then develop into major manipulations through low pass filters as the health becomes close to zero. When the health runs out, we want to cue a separate musical theme for the death of the player. Now if the player is revived, we want to start back in the musical segment that corresponds with the progression through the game level. Now in this first video, we will lay down the tracks for the first two intensity levels and create a looping section for the first segment. We will introduce the tempo and naming markers and set up our randomly triggering drum hits. So when we're done, our project will look like this with some of our tracks and some of our assets with a tempo marker set up, a segment marker set up and a loop region, as well as some random probability on our drum hit. So let's get started. What we'll do is we'll create a new event. What we'll need to do first is we'll actually need to create our tracks. So we need four audio tracks, and I'll show you why in just a minute. And then we'll need to open our audio bin. The audio bin window is like the repository for all of your assets that are imported into your FMOD Studio project. You can sort your audio bin into folders, which I have done here, and you can create new folders and resort your assets in any way that you like. What I've done is because I'm taking assets from two different Loop Masters packs and also some of my own edited assets, I've sorted them into three folders to make them easier for me to find. Now, I'm going to take assets just from pack two at the moment and we'll lay them down into our tracks. So we'll need the brass section. 
We'll need the choir. We'll need the synth. And then we'll also take a drum hit one. Let's head back to our event editor window. Just to make things a little clearer, what I'm gonna do is quickly name my tracks. I'll name them just as they are named in the region. So brass, choir, synth, and hits. Now we can listen to them all together just by hitting play. What I'll do is I'll quickly balance these tracks just so that they're sitting together a little bit more nicely in the mix. What I'll do is I'll flip to faders just by hitting the strips button here. Now the flip to faders view allows you to see each of the tracks and manipulate the volumes, solo and mute states in a door-like view that those who are familiar with sound engineering or music composition in Logic or Ableton will be familiar with. It also makes it easier to see your tracks and comparative volumes just by having your monitoring right here. So I'm going to turn the choir down a little and put the synth down a little too. We can solo each track to hear the audio separately just by hitting the solo button. Or we can mute a track just by hitting the mute button and that actually excludes that particular track from the overall mix at that point in time. Now to get back to tracks view, you just hit this button with the horizontal lines right there. Now that we have our tracks down, we can introduce a few basic logic operations. So right up here we have the logic tracks. And right clicking in the logic track will give you your tools to design the structure of your piece. So what we'll do is we'll add in a tempo marker first. Now a tempo marker defines the tempo and time signature of your piece or event. These operate in the same way as most other doors. The timeline adjusts its meter and measures based on these tempo markers. And the cool thing is that you can have multiple tempo markers and time signatures in each event. You're not tied down to any one time signature or tempo. So our tempo is actually baked into the name of each of the regions and we can see that's 140 beats per minute. Just type that in, the time signature is 44, so we'll just leave it like that. Now what I want to do is we'll start setting up our structure and we'll do that just by throwing in a marker. So right click and press add marker. Now I'm keeping my name simple, I'm just going to call my marker segment 1. And the marker is something that we will use to mark the chapters in the structure of our piece. They are our destinations when we are sending the playback cursor around in our music when we are using transition regions or transition markers. Now, you can also use markers to mark any audio on the timeline without needing to assign logic around them as well. And what I'll also throw in up here is a loop region. A loop region forces the playback cursor to loop within the bounds of the region on the timeline. We'll use this to loop our segments of music or audio to fulfill the design requirement of holding the player according to the intensity level at that point in time. Our looping region will be 12 bars long, so we'll take from five up to bar 17. We'll just watch the cursor. You'll see that it'll actually loop when it hits the end there and it'll go back to the start. There we go. Now the last step is to give the trigger of these hits some random probability value. Now we do this by selecting the region just as I have done there to see its characteristics in the effect deck area. What we'll do is we'll expand the trigger behavior panel on this left hand side just by hitting that one little arrow. And from here we have a host of tools to create logic attached to this region. But what we'll do is we'll focus on the probability knob on the left hand side and set this to a low-ish value so that it is quite unlikely that it will actually trigger. So we do this just by pressing the dice button to activate the probability. We can either use the knob or just type in 30%. So what we should hear now is that only 30% of the time the cursor actually hits this region will it actually trigger. Go. 
So we auditioned this piece a few times and heard that the hits region in this track right here only plays 30% of the time according to its trigger probability. Now this is where we'll leave this video for today. This video has hopefully given you a basic introduction to constructing a few logic operations that are useful for beginning to design your own nonlinear music. We considered a design problem and started constructing a nonlinear piece of music to fit. We started with one looping intensity level and a few simple logic operations. In the next video, we'll continue working with this piece and introduce a second segment and a health parameter to control some volume and effect automation. And I'm really looking forward to showing you these cool, exciting things. So from everyone at Firelight Technologies and FMOD, thanks for joining us today. And we hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye.